Yeah. Stop what you're doing right now and go grab a bottle yeah. of Miracle Food, suitable for all ages, the perfect cleanse and reboot, and it promotes a healthy immune system. Created by some of the most powerful superfoods on the planet, Miracle Food in this day and age is perfect for you. Don't wait. ChakraDoctor.org. Go grab your bottle of Miracle Food right now. Let them know Viral Hip Hop News sent you. Let's go. Fans are people who pay for tickets to support our families. Uh -huh. Fans are not people who come and try to hurt us. That's not a fan. That's just a person, right? So we got to kind of separate the two. Yeah, definitely. Talk talk about um Kwame Brown. I seen you did a little something on YouTube. Um, I didn't get a chance to really hear it, so I'm asking you yeah. now, Joe. How do you feel about him? What he's been through? You know, going at it with uh, Charlemagne the God, Doctor Boyce Watkins, Stephen A. Smith. Fill us in on how you feel about that whole situation. Yeah, I saw. I saw you. I, I kind of saw y'all. I saw y'all comments too on that. Um, I saw Doctor Boyce Watkins comments on that. Um, I, I'm, I'm on I'm on Kwame's side now. I don't agree with everything he said. You know what I'm saying? Because there's certain things he said that I think you. I think he does more research than I do for in terms of social impacts. I don't do that much research. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I just I just I'm just like pro street. I'm a street nigga. My my friends is all locked up, and I'm just pro street. Mm -hmm. I don't care what color you are. I just want my I want my people to be in better conditions. People right. from my neighborhood. You know what I'm saying? So, but I don't do a lot of research like, you know, black power research. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know, um, so he's way more, he's way more uh versed. He, he's he's more versed than me in that topic. So as I was listening to him, but I listen to people like yourself, I listen to Dr. Sebi, I listen to Brother Polite, I listen to Dr. Watkins. That's where I learned a lot of things from. Mm -hmm. You know, I listen to the Hebrew Israelites and all that stuff. Um, now, with, with Kwame, it was, it was certain things I wish like I would have known why he said it. Um, but then, when you talk about Stephen A, yo, when you got a kid coming at 17 years old, coming into the NBA, you can't be attacking this kid like this, yo. You know what I'm saying? You cannot be attacking. He has every right to be furious at everybody. And they was attacking him for years. Like, yeah, he's like, and Kwame don't suck, by the way. Did you watch the on YouTube Kwame Garden and Shaq? Stephen A, try that shit. Mm. Mm. Kwame don't suck. Like, if Kwame suck, what are we saying about Bo Outlaw? Yeah. Nobody mentions how how, how bad of an offensive player Bo Outlaw was. Now, Bo Outlaw, although he wasn't a really threat on offense, but I look at Bo Outlaw as a threat. I would love to have Bo Outlaw on my team. Mm. Bo Outlaw was a hustler. I can work with Kwame. If Kwame was on my team, I'll work with him. I'll get in his ass and I'll say, catch the fucking ball. All right. I want you to score and I want you to get better. Or if he wants the ball in the post, I say, Kwame, you're not ready yet. Get out the post. I'm about to take the block. Go rebound. Like I can work with him. And then after the game, good game, young fella. You're going to get better. I want you to keep working. All right. Just keep, you, know, you know, pay attention to the OGs. We got your back. Like shit like that. Kwame's not a scrub. You know, he just a, he's a he's a late bloomer. You know what I'm saying? I mean, the, the man made a ton of money. And then now in terms of him and Steven Jackson, um, I'm staying out that one because, you know, Steven's my guy. So right. I can stay out that one. Um, That's uh, fair. Um, in terms of, like, you know, a couple of the other people, in terms of boy, Dr. Boyce Watkins, that one was a little bit interesting to me because, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't think Dr. Boyce Watkins was trying to attack him. You know what I'm saying? I don't think Dr. Boyce Watkins was trying. I thought Dr. Boyce Watkins was just – Siding with him, and you know, but Kwame's looking at it differently, and he's pissed off right now because everybody's just like attacking him. Let me ask you this: um, from a a media perspective, when it came to when you played ball, because you look at certain situations, we had Legarrette Blunt on last week, and shout out to Legarrette Blunt, and obviously his situation down in Oregon cost him millions and millions of dollars, and they deemed him this hit throughout his entire career and couldn't be a better human being. Um, obviously, you were stigmatized for what happened at the Palace. And now Kwame Brown's deemed a scrub and all this. And he, he, he blamed it on black media in particular within sports, calling him to go along, get along gang. And mm -hmm. then put there basically to make black athletes look bad. And he went into depth about it, um, in particular with Stephen A. Smith going to certain universities and talking about him at a young age and just kind of putting in the, the basically the scheme and agenda that we hear about from all of our people. That, that school us on what goes on out here and saying that, yeah, there is an agenda damn there to fuck up our money, in particular around contract time. What do you, what yeah, do you yeah. 
I agree. I agree. I knew. I, I I've been knowing there was a go along, get along game. I called people out worse than Kwame waited twenty years. I don't wait that long, man. Once I heard, I'm I'm in, I'm in your ass right then. Now I'm sending the tweet out in thirty seconds. <laughs> I've done it to big. You know, I've done it to people that are in power. You know what I'm saying? And that happened years ago. When people come at me, I'm going back at your neck because people said things about me. My career is about to end. Like in, in 2003, they was ready to kick me out. Yeah. You got to be easy, yo. Don't say things that's going to get me kicked out. Like, chill. Call me on call me on the phone. Everybody got my line. You know what I'm saying? Everybody, niggas in my hood got my line to niggas in the league. Everybody got my line. Hit me up and be like, yo, Meta, chill out. Ron Artes at the time. Chill out. Don't go on TV and then, you know, oh, this guy, he, he's out of control, man. He's wishing bad things, so I get that. You know what I'm saying? I, I really get that. Um, and uh, But now, to their credit, if, if, we, if you didn't grow up like how you guys grew up or how I grew up, aware, you know, uh, whatever, and tuned in, you, and, and you black, you might not know that you're part of the go along, get along crew. You might not know. You just want to, you, you, you're making a check and you're trying to just like, you know, help your family, right. which is okay. You know, not, and so we can't, we can't put those people at fault because they don't know. They not, you know, I'm from, I'm from New York, uptown, 5%. We got the knowledge. We understand like what's going on. You know what I'm saying? Not everybody understand what's going on. So, you know, um, so now, you know, when, when you, now when you look at, Look at like Steve Jackson, for example. Back in the day, there was no opportunities for you to do sports media unless you was in the league. Her. So now these now in sports media, if I was in sports media, you know, I would have, you know, hey, uh, this guy played bad, or he could play better. Like that's that's what you do. You you criticize, you critique, you know, and you and you talk about all subjects and they give you what you're talking about that day for the most part, right? The producer, you're not the producer, you're just a commentator. And you're trying your best to provide for your family for a second career. Um, sometimes we got to understand that we don't want to, we can't, we can't bash people all the time, you know. And and I think um, a lot of our media, like Stephen Jackson, new media, Matt Barnes, new media, Kendrick Perkins, he came on board, like he was doing his thing. Now he big media, but he's essentially kind of new media because people like Kendrick wasn't getting big opportunities. It was always the highest stars, right? So. We're new to this, you know. We're all, all we doing is all we going by is what we see. We see, you know, Stephen A. or any commentator, and we say, okay, I want to do that job, and we, we're going to do it just like how they do it. But when you're, you know, when you're, you know, uh, when you when you had being black, you got to do it differently. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You can't just attack, 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 because we expect something different. Out of Definitely. Sp speaking of that, let's, let's talk about, you know, um, throughout your career, you were kind of, they tried to kind of put you as like a bad boy type of role because you had a few incidents. Um, what, what was your mindset at the time where the media was painting you out to be, you know, like this bad boy image, somebody who's off the cuff, who didn't listen? How were you able to make it through that? What was your mindset the whole time they were going in on you in the media? Well, you know, like when I first got drafted, I got drafted in 1999. So when I went to the draft, I had two buses. My, my hood was there, you know, <laughs> two buses. They was there deep. And then like so. So and then right before I went to college, my brother went to jail 10 years, drug trafficking. Right. Um, that's how the family is. You know, my, my family is selling crack on the same block, the same floor as the habit. His McKillaby was selling dope and same, same floor. So that's that's my family. You know what I'm saying? So with, with that, with that being said, I can't control that. I can't control that Capone, my cousin. <laughs> that I see him get busy. I can't control that. I'm on the block, you know, where the people getting busy and I got to figure it out. You know what I'm saying? Cause I'm not going upstairs. I'm not shying away from my people. You know what I'm saying? I'm on the, I'm outside like, with everybody. So I can't shy away from that. And when I'm coming, when, when I'm coming in I, and I'm telling people, I, I'm trying to tell people the story. So they kept talking about paying them like, yo, we, we from the streets and I love my hood and that's what I love more than anything. You know what I'm saying? And they didn't understand that. They looked at that as being ratchet or being, you know, a thug. I'm not a thug. You know what I'm saying? I just love the streets and my people are currently being shot and killed. And that shit hurt. Like, nigga is dying all the time. I got to hear about this. 
You know what I'm saying? So I'm playing in honor of where are we from. To this day, people still dying, my close ones, because I've been locked in, tuned in, implemented, never left. So people don't understand that. And then, you know, uh, when you try to tell them, like, yo, I'm not wearing this suit today. I ain't doing that today. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 I'm, and I'm trying to inspire my hood as, as much as I can. And they take that as being a thug. And that's not a, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I was never a thug. You know what I'm saying? Um, and then, but I was highly stressed. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I was highly stressed. And um, I wasn't able to focus on the game. I don't even know how I got these awards. Like I got a defensive player of the year, first team, 13 all NBA. I don't even know how I got those. <laughs> I was so stressed out playing basketball to the point where when I was 23, I put in retirement papers. Right after I got defensive player of the year, I called the NBA and put in my retirement papers. Um, Cause I was just trying to figure it out, you know? Uh, and and when you, when you don't, when you don't, when you can't uh, identify, you just say, oh, yeah, he's a thug. Oh, he's a thug. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, I'm, you know, so I just dealt with it. I just take it on the chin and I'm good. That's what you feel about me. That's how you feel about me, man. I'm, I'm good. But I'm good. I, and I'm not trying to, I was never trying to impress nobody anyway. You know what I'm saying? So you know, they, they, they either going to change their mind about me or, or, or talk to me or not. You know, uh, and then that reputation kind of kind of let people stray away from me, you know, um, even with the USA game, what defensive player of the year, 13 more NBA all-stars not making the Olympic team, not even getting a tryout. <laughs> you, you got 12 spots and you got 12 people trying out. I'm only, I'm 13. That's number, if I'm not 12, I'm, I'm, I'm number 15. I'm number 15. How am I not getting a tryout? They didn't even pick up the phone when I was calling. I'm thinking I'm about to get invited. I'm nice. I'm just waiting for that call. And then when they, I'm like, they, they announced the team. I'm like, what? They in the city. What? I'm like, yo, y'all forgot somebody, man. Not even, right. they didn't even get a response. You know what I mean? But I take it on the chin. You can't tell me that I'm not an Olympian. You know what I'm saying? They de deprived me of getting that goal. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I know I messed up in the league, but I ain't messed up in the Olympics yet. <laughs> Give me a chance. <laughs> Mess it up, you know what I mean? But um, uh, but so you know, I I kind of I kind of experienced all sorts of things. Certain shots you can't even see. Certain shots, you know, and they just making these decisions in the back, and you don't even you don't know what's going on. You just know, cut him out here, cut him out here, cut him out here. They ain't picking up the phone here. No deal here. You know what I'm saying? So I, I know what it is. What's good, man? This is Sam Ant, CEO of Viral Hip Hop News. Listen, I appreciate each and every one of y'all. We're going to check out this documentary. Shout out to my man, Lonnie Fresh. Do me a favor. Go to YouTube right now. Go subscribe to Viral Hip Hop News. One of the best hip hop platforms out here right now. We also have The Hub, Hip Hop News Uncensored. Of course, the podcast, the baddest podcast out. The Hip Hop Uncensored podcast. We drop seven days a week doing this thing 100% independent. There was not one day that I was at work on the Fresh Prince of Bel that I wished I was somewhere. Now, let's talk about the player club because. You, I, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, that's like your first major role in a movie, right? Taking over the game. I really appreciate each and every one of y'all. You can grab merch on the YouTube site. You can talk to me on there and much more. Sam Ant, CEO of Viral Hip Hop News. Appreciate each and every one of y'all. Oh God, you the man, Cass. I spit white like a clan mask. And I'm a hustler.